Lady and gentlemen, today I'm going to jump into a pass repair I did on my 2006 Ford F-150. The reason why I'm making this video is because it was a pretty involved electrical repair and uh, is definitely new information for me. So I wanted to put a video out there and just kind of get into the ether of the internet. Originally, I unloaded the old parts cannon at the problem and that didn't fix it. So I tried some other small things. Uh, you know, blew through a handful of fuses trying some stuff. And then I finally decided to take myself seriously, buy a wiring diagram. I'll show you this handy website where I got the diagram from and uh, bust out the old multimeter and figure out what's really going on. Just a friendly reminder to subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, I know it doesn't take a lot of time for the viewer and it really helps a small channel like me and keeps me motivated to continue making videos. Thanks guys. My name is Jeremy. This is Regen Automotive and let's get to work. Now that we got the awkward introduction out of the way, let's jump right into the work. Uh, first, I'm gonna talk about how I notice a problem and it's very simple, so brace yourselves for it. You ready? The turn signal simply just stopped working on my dash. Once I noticed the issue, I brought the old girl back home and just parked it until I uh, looked into it. I'm glad I did because it turned out that more lights weren't working than just the turn signals. So my first step of diagnosis was, check, was to check the flasher relay. To do this, I took it out and just did, you know, some simple visual inspection and bench tests. And then I checked for power and ground at the actual plug and I noticed I had no power. I then thought to myself, where does this little guy get his power from? Probably the turn signal or the flasher flasher switch that I just replaced a week or two prior. Can you take a guess where I got the part from? You probably guessed it, all of our favorite cheap part site, Rock Auto. And with the stellar track record I had with the reliability of cheap Rock Auto parts, I decided to do something wise and replace the turn signal switch with an OEM one I got from the junkyard. To replace the turn signal stock, I first removed the two seven millimeter bolts on this bottom kick panel. Just pry back and remove the kick panel. Once the kick panel is removed, I remove this 730 seconds column cover screw. Next, I remove the column covers. With the lower column cover removed, I use a 730 seconds to remove the two upper column cover screws. With the column covers removed, I use a 730 seconds to remove the turn signal switch. Once I replaced the turn signal switch, I went to go use it, and nothing. Nothing worked. The turn signal switch or the hazards. Upon further research, I found that fuse number two in the passenger side kick panel uh, feeds the rear light assemblies. So I finally decided to come to my senses and check this fuse, which I should have done in the first place, but I did not. Surprise, surprise. I pull the fuse and that puppy is blown. Easy. It's just a blown fuse this whole time, right? It's got to be that easy. So I took the truck for its maiden voyage to make sure everything was working properly while driving on the road. And everything seemed to work properly, you know. I was celebrating my easy repair, cheap repair, as happier than a pig in Simply replacing the fuse did not fix the problem, so I brought the truck back home, popped a new fuse in, and tried to replicate the issue while I was parked in my garage. To replicate the issue, I tried the turn signals, the hazard switch, I tried turning the wheel back and forth while they're on to see if it's a clock spring, and the turn signals are still working under all these conditions. Seeing as the issue didn't present itself while the truck was stopped, I thought to myself, it must happen while it's driving. So I took the truck for a drive, and the fuse blew before I could even get out of my driveway. What? the fuck. At this point, I was convinced that the truck was smarter than me. So I brought it back in the garage, popped another fuse in and thought maybe it blows while the truck is running. It's still not popping while the truck is running. So again, I tried to take it for a drive to replicate the problem. And to leave the garage, I press the brake. Finally, we have a direction. It seems to be that the fuse is blowing when I press the brake. So let's get the kick panel off and inspect our brake switch wiring and see if there's anything weird going on there. Using an 8 mil, remove the four kick plate bolts. With the kick panel off, 
I'm just looking around the brake switch wiring to see if there's any shorts or kinks in the wire, or wires fraying or anything that's out of the ordinary. Everything seems to be normal. So I decided to follow the definition of insanity, pop a new fuse in and press the brake pedal for good measure. All right, boys and girl, let's quit messing around and finally buy a wiring diagram for this truck so we can get more accurate with our diagnosis. So I'd like to show you this really handy website that I found just randomly searching when I was looking for wiring diagrams. It's called portal-diagnostive.com. And on the homepage here, you can buy uh, all the wiring diagrams for five cars, 10 cars, 25 cars for that amount of money. Uh, I did the five cars for 30 bucks and so far it's seeming legit. I've bought two cars with it. Let's jump right into the wiring for the Ford truck and I can explain to you my thought process while I was testing. So here I am at the backup lamps wiring diagram and this was the 20 amp fuse that kept popping on me. So um, yeah, so we have the light green red wire that goes to the brake pedal position switch. Uh, and then there's one that branches off here that powers the uh, flasher relay. So when I was testing the flasher relay, I actually tested like a check for power at this plug and I didn't have power. So that indicated to me that the flasher relay was not my original issue. What you guys having is every time I like hit the brakes, it would blow this fuse immediately. So what that tells me is when this circuit connects, power goes from my 20 amp fuse. And I also knew that it, all the wiring on the back end was good. Cause again, the issue would only happen when I hit the brake and it'd connect this circuit. So when it connected the circuit, I either had an issue. There's two power wires that go to the turn signal switch here. One that goes to your trailer brake controller and another one that goes to the uh, rear, like the, the high mounted brake lamp just at the top of the cab there. So another thing that I did to really rule out that I didn't need to replace the brake switch is I connected the light green and red to this light green, uh, the two plugs you'll see in the video. Um, yeah, I just connected that with a jumper wire and it just totally bypasses brake switch. Uh, before you do that, I would like, like full disclaimer, like know exactly what you're short circuiting. Like I'm not telling you to do this, like do it at your own dismay, like do your own research, whatever. This is just what I did and this is what worked for me. But again, do any electrical wires or shorts you're connecting, do it your own caution. Now we're looking at my uh, little short circuit there. And again, all that did was connect the light green wire to the green and red wire. And as soon as I did that, the fuse immediately blew. As a final check over to make sure I wasn't missing anything when I shorted the brake switch, I plugged it back in and hit the brake. Clearly the brake pedal switch wasn't the problem and I was running critically low on fuses. So let's finally bust out the multimeter and start testing some of these wires. The first test I did with the multimeter was connecting one of the leads at the red and green wire at the brake pedal switch. And then I back probed the other lead in one of the light green wires at the turn signal switch. With one lead connected to the brake pedal switch and the other lead back probed in the uh, light green wire at the turn signal switch, I turned my multimeter to the resistance setting on the lowest scale and I was getting next to zero value. So I was happy with that and I moved on to my next wire. Pretty much the same setup here. One lead connected to the red and green wire at the brake pedal switch and then the other lead back probed on the other light green wire at the turn signal switch. Once again, I was getting a resistance reading of close to zero with the multimeter on the lowest scale, so I moved on to the next wire. With the same multimeter lead connected to the wire at the brake pedal switch, I connected the other lead to the light green wire at the high mount brake light. To connect to the high mount brake light wire, I removed the interior dome light and then I popped out the lens of the high mount brake light and that way I was able to run a jumper wire from inside the cab at my multimeter to the high mount brake light wire. Once again, I had a resistance reading close to zero, so I was happy with that and move on to the next wire. Last, but certainly not least, I ran the same multi-liter wire to the plug at the brake switch, and then I ran the second lead 
to the light green wire at the trailer plug underneath the dash. Once under the dash, I just push back the plug to expose the light green wire. I then flipped the plug to find the corresponding pin and connected the jumper wire alligator clip and plugged the other end to the second lead on my multimeter. Finally, I'm getting another clue. The resistance was so high, it might as well have been one mi 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 million ohms. With my last and final clue, I poked around the dash around the trailer brake wiring to see if I could see any issues. And with no issues there, before I went crazy, took apart the dash and dug into all the wiring, I went around to the back of the truck to see how the trailer plug looked. And wouldn't you know, the trailer plug is green and corroded as shit. Snip the light green wire going to the trailer plug, throw a new fuse in it, and apply the brakes with my handy dandy brake applying tool, also known as my pry bar, and go to the back and see if the lights are finally fixed. Since I don't plan on doing any towing with the truck, and I don't want you guys to think that I'm a complete hack, I cut back the green wire until there's no more corrosion and I sealed it off with a heat shrink tube. I also cut back the white wire that was starting to chafe and corrode and uh, did the same heat shrink and then I taped them both up together in the wiring harness to keep any moisture out. At this point, once I confirmed my lights were working in all conditions, I was happy. Considering all the parts I threw at it, all the fuses I blew, I was happier than a pig rolling, eating, basking, glorifying in its mother fucking shit.